Well, infant growth uh, changes a lot during the first year. It's very rapid in the beginning and then it's going decreasing with time. And uh, therefore, the composition of the milk has most likely developed uh, to fit those needs. Well, the breast milk uh, concentrations of particularly protein change a lot early on and th that may have several reasons. Uh, several of these proteins are protective and of course the infant is most uh, vulnerable when it's newborn and very young. And uh, immunoglobulins, for example, are high in breast milk. Several of the other protective proteins are very high. They decline, they decrease in concentration relatively soon during the first month of lactation. On the other hand, breast milk volumes taken in by the infants increase. So therefore, the, the intake numbers of these components don't change as dramatically as the concentrations in the milk, since the mother is capable of producing more and more mi milk uh, during particularly the first month of lactation. If we talk about uh, infections, the, the breastfed infants, uh, like you said, have benefits when it comes to the, the prevalence of infections during the first year of life. So there are short-term benefits when it comes to preventing uh, upper respiratory disease, um, otitis media in particular, and those things. If we're talking about development in general, we're also talking about brain development or uh, cognitive development and there you also see a difference just after one year. So it's relatively short term. Long term we see a difference in many of the chronic diseases that we don't want to see. Uh, we see certainly obesity increasing in those that have formerly been formula fed. We see more type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, uh, such things that are long-term, you see a difference. Even if there are socioeconomic factors that differ between breastfed and formula-fed infants, if you try to control for those confounders, there are still differences in long-term outcomes, which we would like to try to, to minimize as much as we can. I am fairly convinced, even if I don't have evidence, that is the protein concentration of the formula. Because in principle, virtually all formula-fed infants are hyperinsulinemic. That means that they have higher serum insulin than breastfed infants. Uh, that is, my guess, would be a predisposing factor for obesity. And we know that obesity is a predisposing factor for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So. Uh, Anything we can do to reduce the protein content without having any adverse effects would be beneficial in a long-term perspective, I believe. On the other hand, it's difficult to do those studies because we can look at infants during the first year of life, but then to follow them up to six, seven years when they start school, when they're teenagers, those studies are very costly and very difficult to do. But those are the types of studies that we need to do to confirm what I said is my suspicion and hypothesis that the high protein intake will have long-term adverse effects. It's a very good question. Ideally, of course, I would like to see as uh, narrow as possible intervals early on. Like you said, that, that's the, the most vulnerable period of development. And today, infant formulas are a compromise because you have to kind of mix the requirements of an infant that is six months with one that is newborn, that is in Europe. In the US, you have to mix the requirement of a 12-month-old infant to that of a newborn infant. So you have compromises in there and if you introduce the concept of staging you can for each time interval get much closer to the goal. So therefore staging I think is a very practical and biological approach to matching what the breastfed infant is seeing that is 
you have a development of the nutrient intake uh, with age. Uh, and uh, that is the idea behind the staging approach. I certainly believe so, but like I said, we don't have the evidence for that. Uh, when it comes to health outcomes, when it comes to illnesses, for example, I, I don't think yet you will see much because you, you're changing the composition to target the metabolic needs. Uh, you're not really changing any of the factors that would be preventing uh, acute illness during the first year of life. So therefore, what you would have to look at are the uh, long-term outcomes, uh, like we said before, obesity, childhood obesity, childhood diabetes. And they, these need to be large size studies to show benefits. But uh, like I said, I'm, I'm reasonably optimistic that uh, such benefits would be found. Thank you. <laughs> okay.